All right. All right. I'll go. Hi, everybody. Thank you for attending this talk. On uh, So I'm going to be telling, talking about PubNub, real-time applications, and uh, where microservices fit in. So um, a little bit about myself. I'm a solution architect at PubNub, and that's my Twitter handle if you want any um, real-time updates about real-time infrastructure and, every, and always on applications, then you can follow me at Bhavna1110. And uh, so I work at this company called PubNub, and what we do is, OK, no, never mind. I'll tell you what, what we're going to talk about. So it's all, we're going to talk about what an always-on application is, what is the infrastructure needed to build them, how, you know, how has this infrastructure changed from building these static web and uh, mo two mobile applications to now these always-on applications, and finally, where microservices fit in. Um, so let's give you all a bit of context. Uh, let me explain what PubNub is. So PubNub is uh, providing real-time infrastructure as a service. So uh, imagine you wanted to build a real-time application like chat, or taxi dispatch, or a multiplayer game, or even an IoT application where you're controlling all the devices in your house. So what is happening there? You have data going between all of these different devices in real time. You click a button, your light goes on. You click your button and the garage door closes. You don't want that to happen five seconds later. You want that to happen instantly. So that's what we call as real-time communication. Any message or anything that happens in real life, you want to send that over to somebody else or some other device as it happens. That's what is real-time communication. And what PubNub provides is an easy way to build these real-time apps. So we provide a global network to which devices can connect to and now send messages between each other. Doesn't matter if it's 100 devices, doesn't matter if it's a million devices, PubNub will connect all of those devices and send data between them. Uh, and the way we provide this is through real-time APIs. We sell to developers. We want developers to use our APIs. And so if you were building a real-time app, you wanted to send information. Say you're building a chat application. You want to send, your mess send a message to your friend saying, hey, what's up? That, is, that can be sent using our Publish API. And the person receiving it will use our subscribe API. Or maybe you want to show who's online, who's offline at any point. That can, be, that can be done using our presence API. Or you might want to do some kind of in-stream processing, right? Like, so if, if, uh, if you send a message, but the person receiving that message understands only Mandarin, you want to translate it midway. So that kind of in-stream processing can also be done through one of our APIs. So what we provide is this real-time infrastructure so that you focus on business logic, the app that you actually want to build. We'll provide that underlying infrastructure to build the application. So just some boring key stats for you if you're interested. So we have around, uh, the, the point to show over here is that we operate at scale. So you can have trillions of you know, bytes of data going through PubNub uh, to, and millions of devices connecting through PubNub and still PubNub will be able to handle it for you. We operate at huge volumes of traffic, and the key is that any message will go in an average of 250 milliseconds to any other device in, in anywhere in the world. So I could talk to a person in Australia, and that would go instantly, and the same from here to maybe Virginia. So um, we have a lot of customers who use us, and over different industries and verticals. So. Um, Basically, what's happening is that we have all of these people using smartphones and devices. And these days, it's not just smartphones or, or web devices, right? We have a lot of these IoT devices. No one wants to be left alone. You are including all of these devices. They are all connecting to each other and sending data between themselves. So it could be, stre it could be streaming sensor data. It could be text information. But the point is that there are these data streams going between all of these devices in real time. And so. Um, some of the examples, you guys might recognize some of these logos, but over several verticals or several industries, we have all of these different companies that you might not think, you might be like, what is um, a Coca-Cola doing with real-time information? But they, they have these interactive billboards and dashboards that where people interact with in real time. Or all these connected uh, cars or connected vehicles where you have a taxi dispatch application. Um, it's all real-time 
location data between devices, between the driver's device and the user's device. So all of these are examples of real-time apps that you might have used at some point or the other that uh, we categorize as always on, which, you know, as things happen, it's communicated instantly to millions of devices. Um, so what we saw is that, you know, all, we had all these web applications, people coming out of college know how to build amazing, huge, scalable web applications, and the same with mobile as well. So you know that there's some kind of um, infrastructure or a platform or a stack that you can use and get going. Um, you don't have to sit and build the basic infrastructure to build a web or a mobile app. But for, for the streaming kind of applications that we're talking about, the always-on applications that we're talking about, that's not the case. It's relatively new. Like we, We're so used to pressing control, our, con, uh, refreshing our web page to get new information or weather information. But what if the server could push that information to you as it happens, right? Instead of you pulling for that information, instead of you polling for that information, what if you could just get that server to send you information as it happens. So we're still getting used to these kind of real-time always-on applications. And what does that translate to? It means that there's not enough of this infrastructure needed to get going to build this real-time application very easily. You still, like say if I wanted to tomorrow say, hey, I want to build a different kind of chat application, what do I do? And then you have to go in and decide to build, oh, I need a network. I need to be connecting all my devices. How do I know the IP address of the device to connect to? And all of these different problems that you have to try and solve for before you actually get to building that beautiful chat app. Right? Like, so for the streaming web, there's not this infrastructure of readily available, and that's what PubNub is trying to solve. We provide that infrastructure so that you can go and build these applications. So if you think of a taxi dispatch app and a chat app or anything else, they might seem different, but they're actually essentially the same thing. Devices connecting to a network, sending data between them. It's just that the data that they send between themselves is different. Sometimes it's location information. Sometimes it's text messages. Sometimes it could be multiplayer game movements. But they're all like, so the base infrastructure is common. So we thought, why not provide that as a starting step for people trying to build these real-time applications? And so um, we're all familiar with this REST-based architecture, wherein devices, when they have any, um, they, they pull the server, basically. They request something, and then whenever there's information available, that server's going to send them back information. But for a streaming kind of real-time application, you can't just have this model. I mean, it doesn't work great uh, at scale. So what you need is all of these devices to be connected uh, all the time with any long pole uh, connection and streaming data between themselves. So um, that's what we provided at PubNub. Oh, it's supposed to. Oh, never mind. Yeah, that's what we provided at PubNub. We built this huge network, which is highly available and highly redundant, that devices can now connect to. Oopsie. Let's go back. Yeah. Sorry, guys. My animation has to be on point. Um, so yeah, so we built this network where all of these devices can connect to and now send data between themselves. Uh, it's not based of a, a request a REST kind of architecture model. What we do is we open HTTP long polling connections between the devices and the network. So whenever there's information available, one device publishes it, another device subscribes to it. It's based off of this very simple PubSub interface that you guys might have heard of. Um, so, what we, wow. So yeah. So what we realized is we're telling people, hey, we have this, we have this amazing network for you to use. Why don't you build these applications over it? Uh, we have all these inbuilt like presence module, a history module, so that you can pull out these real-time messages at a later point, or you could uh, store the messages uh, that are going through between your devices, or you can see who's online and who's offline. So we built all these components, but we realized that. When people actually started building uh, their applications, it was not just device, PubNub, device. It was not like that. It went from devices to PubNub to their own servers, and then back to PubNub, back to the devices. So there was always some kind of computation that they had to do on their own server, be it like you know, uh, parsing that message and deciding where to store it or to translate that message. So they would always, it would never be a simple peer-to-peer -peer connection that we envisioned, it always went through their server. So we realized that this won't scale, um, because 
as you have more number of devices, okay, I'm so not used to this, pardon me. Um, so yeah, so think of this simple example where you have a chat application and you want to translate the message. Um, your, this is like, assume it's, a, it, it's the Super Bowl, you, it's sponsored by this amazing soda company called Yummy, and they have a chat application that they want everyone to use. Um, the only thing that they don't want is to see their competitor's name, or even if they see the competitor's name, they want to know how many times people have been you know, mentioning that competitor's name, or how many people love that competitor more than them. So the only thing that they don't want to see there is that gunk soda. So what they would do for this is um, all these devices are connected to uh, PubNub, you know, chat messages going between all of their devices, and it would go to their server, they would put some simple logic that says, if the word gunk comes in, then remove it or count and replace it with yummy. And then send it back to, their, send it back to all their devices, right? So it seems like a simple enough problem, but the more number of, imagine like several thousands of users coming. They would have to spin up so many servers and capacity just for that one event, just for that, to power that chat application. So, and this is not just for chat, right? It could be, maybe it could be for like business logic for taxi dispatch applications where you want to see, okay, let me ma like match me to the, 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 the drivers available only in a one mile radius. Or it could be like to run a rules engine for a multiplayer game or anything like sentiment analysis. Say you had a customer support chat kind of system and you want to see in real time, how is this chat going? Is it going south or is it, uh, have we, are we providing a, a valuable service to people? So anything, they would have to send it to their own servers before publishing it back to people who are interested. And so what we decided to do at PubNub is we, we decided to push all that logic, that business logic into PubNub itself and make PubNub, which is essentially just a network, a computer. So we're like, hey, if you have business logic that you want to put in your application, put it on PubNub. PubNub will host it for you. Um, so now it's even more real time in the sense that, yeah, so it's even more real time in the sense that as, as, as data flows between your devices, it's processed in stream over PubNub and then it is sent out. So there's no need to, it eliminates those two hops to your server and back from the server. So that's what we call the blocks. And it's essentially allowing developers to put in um, JavaScript on our PubNub network. So um, it, it's triggered instantly. So you deploy what we call a block. It's deployed all over the PubNub network. And uh, it auto scales. So, so say today you have 100 users using the application. Tomorrow you have a million users. Blocks will scale automatically. Every single message will hit that block, get processed, and sent out to another, to the end devices. So some amazing, uh, you can see there's some advantages to using blocks. So as PubNub is, we provide five nines SLA, which means that our network is available for, if it's not, I mean, if it's not available for more than 26 seconds in a month, we give credits back to a customer. It's a very highly available network, and so blocks get that same benefit. That logic that you put in, business logic, is also highly available, uh, just like how PubNub is. So, um, and it can be encrypted as well. Data can be encrypted, it's all safe. So the way you would solve that yummy soda problem is just that a message comes in through Pub and hits the block, and then you just replace. You're looking for the word gunk there, and you're replacing it with yummy. So maybe you want to replace it. Maybe you want to transform it. Maybe you want to count how many times they use this word. So you can do any kind of business logic or in-stream processing on this message that comes in before you send it out. So um, there's no need to you know, deploy your own servers to do the same business logic. You can now just do it on PubNub itself. And you deploy, you click this button, there's an amazing animation that shows you how it's deployed all over the PubNub network. So every single message will now be processed by this block. It'll hit the block before reaching uh, the end devices. Um, so then, so essentially blocks is a way to spin up microservices on the PubNub network very easily. And so we, when we launched blocks, we had all these API partners, which means that now through a block, you can hit all these partners and get some information out of it. So say you're sending a message and you realize that your destination, the person you're sending it to, is offline. So you want to send them an SMS or an email instead, instead of a PubNub message. So then you use maybe um, a click send 
and send out an SMS to that person. Or you can use SendGrid and send out an email. Or um, you can use Mapbox. For example, in a taxi dispatch kind of application, you send it the lat long, but then you use the Mapbox APIs to now transform it to an actual location or an address. Or, uh, so a bunch of different API partners that we use. We've actually now just uh, integrated with Cisco Spark as well. So it's the, the collaborative uh, the, the board that you can use. So now you can also send a message through PubNub and do fun stuff with the board in real time. Um, so then we realized that, OK, if people are on the PubNub network, if they are using PubNub as the means for communication between devices, they can use blocks. But what if they've already built in a real-time application, but they just want to use PubNub for um, you know, hosting these functions or hosting these blocks or event handlers? So we thought, OK, we want to make this network more and more accessible for everyone. Uh, even people outside this PubNub ecosystem should be able to use the benefits of PubNub. And so what we did was we're providing now functions as a service, um, essentially like webhooks. So for instance, say you have this chat translation function that you want, and you've already built your chat service somewhere else. Um, you wrap this function, you put it on the PubNum network, it's deployed, you wrap it with a URL, and you can, ac you can hit it from anywhere. Essentially, uh, it's the well-known, understood model of HTTP. So you just make a, um, like this, how this end. You wrap it with a URL, you'd make a GET request, it's, it's deployed on PubNub, so now it probably translates it or tra filters it out or does anything with it, sends you back that response. So you can set up your response codes. You can do like fun stuff with the data that you want to. But essentially, what I'm trying to say is you can access this function from anywhere. So we just host that function for you. you can, so it's a, a blocks endpoint is what we call it. So it's pretty simple to do this. You, you give it a name. You Set, choose the request type that you want, you get that URI, you create, and then boom, it's deployed all over, just like any other block. But you don't actually have to use PubNub APIs to communicate. You're just hitting this through your own well-known understood model of HTTP. Yes. Um, so that's how much time we have. But uh, this is going into some more details of what that code looks like, so you can uh, work with the different res request and response models to do anything to your data. So um, any questions about this? So I'm, I'm just going to summarize that we understood that PubNub is a, a real-time data stream network. It provides real-time infrastructure as a service. So if there's any real-time app that you want to build, you can use PubNub APIs to do so. It's, uh, we, we target only developers, so all, everything that this PubNub amazing network is, is available as APIs to developers. So if you want to send or receive messages or do some amazing stream comp, like in-stream processing, then you can use the PubNub APIs to do so. So in, in a way, we are trying to make this network much more smarter by doing, putting all this processing inside it. So if you have any questions, then uh, I'm going to be sticking around. We have a booth as well in the other um, room. So we can talk then. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bhavana. Excellent presentation. And um, reminder, uh, you can find her at the booth in the cube area if you have any other questions.